Many people think that they lack motivation when what they really lack is clarity. If you can change your habits, you can change your life. For many of the habits and behaviors that we want to perform, they're gonna take longer than two minutes. You know, if you go to the gym, you're not gonna work out for just two minutes. But any habit can be started in less than two minutes. Everybody wants a transformation, right? Everybody wants a radical improvement, we want rapid success, but we fail to realize that small habits and little choices are transforming us every day already. That these times when you make a choice that's slightly better, slightly worse, a little mistake or a small error, 1% um, better or 1% worse, that these things compound over time. And habits are the compound interest of self-improvement. And so if you can learn to master those, then you can make time work for you rather than get against you. Good habits make time your ally, bad habits make time your enemy. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to build the habits that you need to get the results that you want. There are four stages of habit formation, I'm gonna take you through each of those four. So the four stages are noticing, wanting, doing, and liking. You cannot perform a habit or take an action if you do not notice something. I need to see a coffee cup sitting on the side in order to pick it up first. If it's not in my realm of knowledge, if I don't know it exists, I can't do anything about it. But then I need to want it. I need to want to drink coffee and pick it up. If I don't desire it or crave it, then I will not take the action. Then there's doing, you actually do the habit. And then I need to enjoy the reward. I need to enjoy drinking the coffee to repeat it again. One of my favorite things about noticing, one of my favorite strategies for discussing it, it's called implementation intentions. So. One of my favorite studies is about exercise. And they had three cohorts in this study. So they have the first cohort, they said, I just want you to track how often you work out over the next few weeks, right? So that's the standard cohort, the control group. Second group, they said, we want you to track how often you exercise. We're also gonna give you a motivation, motivational speech, presentation, talk about the benefits of heart health, why habits are good for you, and so on. The third group, they got the same presentation, so they're equally motivated, and then they did one thing differently. And that one thing was they filled out this sentence. They said, during the next week, I will partake in at least 20 minutes of vigorous exercise on this day, in this at this time, in this place. They specifically stated their intention to implement the behavior. Here's what happened. First group, one out of three of them worked out. Second group, motivation did nothing. As soon as they left the researcher's facility the next day, they weren't motivated. It's like reading a book or watching a YouTube or listening to a motivational speaker and then you forget all about it 20 minutes later. But the third group, the group that had a specific plan for how they were gonna implement the behavior, nine out of 10 of them worked out. So you can increase your odds of success two to three X just by having a specific plan. And this is the insight. Many people think that they lack motivation when what they really lack is clarity. They think that they need to get more motivated, that they need willpower in order to execute on a habit. If I just felt like writing, if I just felt like meditating, if I felt like working out, then I would do it. But in fact, they don't have a plan for it. And so they wake up each day thinking, I wonder if I'll feel motivated to write today. I wonder if I'll feel motivated to work out today. But instead, you can take the decision making out of it by explicitly stating when, where, and how you want to implement the habit. So you need to give your goals a time and a place to live in the world. Right? Give them space on your calendar. The core point about noticing is it's hard to change something if you're not aware of it, and one way to become more aware of the opportunity to take action is to have a specific plan for when it's gonna happen. Stage two, wanting. One of the most overlooked drivers of habits and human behavior is our physical environment. And this is an interesting insight about our desires. Your environment often influences them. We want things simply, simply because they are an option, right? Simply because they are in front of us at the time. You walk into any living room in America, where do all the couches and chairs face? They all look at the TV. It's like, what is that room designed to get you to do? We wonder why we sit and watch so much TV, uh, and it's because our desires are shaped in that way. So thankfully, you don't have to be the victim of your environment, you can also be the architect of it. You can decide to design something to make your good behaviors easier and your bad behaviors harder. So when it comes to habits, if you wanna practice your guitar more frequently, put it right in the middle of your living room so you run across it all the time. If you want to read more, when you make your bed in the morning, take the book you want to read, put it on top of the pillow. When you come back that night, pick it up, read a few pages, go to sleep. Many of our desires are simply shaped because we have an environment that shapes us in that way. So don't rely on willpower and self-control. It's a lot easier to stick to better habits when you're presented with better options. Stage three, doing. In the beginning, the most important thing is just to shut up and put your reps in. Just make sure that you hone the skill, right? And you can start to think of it, the way that I like to think of it is that any outcome that you wish to achieve is just a point along the spectrum of repetitions. So if you have few reps to more reps, and you can imagine an easy goal, a moderate goal, a hard goal, the more reps that you put in, the more that you, more likely you, you are to achieve that goal. And this is actually very similar to what I saw with my writing habit. So after six articles, I had 100 subscribers. After 23, 1,000. 
After 96, 34,000, 177, 100,000, 243, and so on. And every rep that I put in, every article that I published, was something that was moving me closer to the next outcome on that spectrum. But you can't get around the fact that the repetitions matter. So, and this brings us to an interesting point, which is that if getting your reps in is incredibly important, then that means learning how to start is incredibly important because each repetition, really any consistency with the habit is just an exercise in getting started each day. If you can get started over and over again, then that's what consistency is. For many of the habits and behaviors that we want to perform, they're gonna take longer than two minutes. You know, if you go to the gym, you're not gonna work out for just two minutes. But any habit can be started in less than two minutes, whether it's writing, working out, meditating, anything. And so the goal here is that you wanna optimize for the beginning of the, the task. You want your habits to act as an entrance ramp to a bigger routine. What I like to say is you should optimize for the starting line, not the finish line. Right? So often when we think about habits, goals, routines, achievements, it's all about the milestone. We think about how much weight we want to lose, how much money we want to earn, how many subscribers we want to have. It's all fixed on the finish line. But instead, if you can optimize for the starting line and make it as easy as possible to get started and get your reps in, often the outcomes just come as a natural result. Stage four, liking. So the only reason that we repeat behaviors is because we enjoy them, because we like the reward. If we don't enjoy the experience along the way, we're unlikely to stick with it. And that means that you need to figure out ways to bring a reward into the present moment because good habits have a problem. And that problem is that for good habits, the immediate consequence is there. There's a cost that happens in the moment, but the reward is often delayed. If I go to the gym now, it's cost me time and energy and effort, but the reward is I'll be fit three months from now or not get sick 10 years from now or so on. The reward is delayed. Bad habits are often the reverse. If I eat a donut right now, the benefit is it tastes great and I get a hit of sugar and it's awesome and the consequence is delayed, right? I get overweight three weeks from now, or three months from now or so on. So you need to figure out how to bring the reward into the present moment to stick to a good habit. Many people, they'll get a chain going and then they fall off track and they feel bad about it. They feel like, oh, I, you know, I ruined it. I had this great thing and now it's over. The streak is gone. But what you find when you look at top performers is not that they don't make mistakes. They make mistakes just like everybody else but they can just get back on track more quickly. And in fact, if you could just adhere to this one rule, never miss twice, then you would, you know, even if you fell off track every single time after you got back on track, you still would do it 50% of the time. Change can happen plank by plank, board by board, habit by habit. And gradually, you can become someone new. With consistency and repetition, you can actually change not only your results, but actually your identity. And the reason that this is true is because the more evidence that we have for a belief, the more likely we are to believe it. So if you go to church every Sunday for 20 years, you believe that you are religious. If you study Spanish every Thursday night for 20 minutes, you believe that you are studious. The actions that you take provide evidence for who you are. And it's not that habits matter more necessarily on an individual basis. Each moment in life matters. But what ends up happening is that over the broad span of time, things that you do once or twice fade away and things that you do time after time, day after day, week after week, accumulate the bulk of the evidence for what you believe about yourself. And so every action that you take is actually a vote for the type of person that you wanna become. If you wanna become someone new, then you can take a new action and begin to accumulate evidence for that identity, for that belief about yourself. And that the more votes that you cast, the more likely you are to win the election. You don't need to be unanimous. You don't have to be perfect all the time. You just need to have the body of work. So true change is actually not behavior change, it's not results change, it's not process change, it's identity change. The goal is not to become, the goal is not to read a book, it's to become a reader. The goal is not to write a book or write an article, it's to become a writer. The goal is not to run a marathon, it's to become a runner, to become a type of person, to develop an identity. And the way to being something or becoming someone is through doing something. So every time you sit down to write, every time you practice that habit, you are being a writer. Every time you play a sport, you're being an athlete. Every time you practice painting or music or whatever, you're being an artist. Your identity emerges out of the habits that you have. It's not just about getting you to make small changes. It's not just about putting a book on your pillow or putting an apple on the counter. It's actually about getting you to believe something new about yourself, something possible about yourself. And habits are not only the method through which we achieve external measures of success, like losing weight or gaining more, earning more money or meditating and reducing stress. They are also the path through which we achieve internal change and actually become someone new. They're the path through which we forge the identity that we have, the deepest beliefs we have about ourselves, our sense of self.